Okay, so here's the thing about the story. You know that whole bit about 19th century France? And that whole thing about this game being about Chopin? Well, this happens. No, it's not. This place used to be much more beautiful. Let me just stop it right here and get something cleared up. This guy you're seeing is Chopin. As in Frederick. As in Frederick Chopin, the famous Polish composer and pianist. I know, right? He's a dead ringer for the guy. Anyway, let's let him talk. It's his game, after all. You have a heart that sees the world with open eyes, don't you? Who, who are you? And what are you doing out here this late at night? Everything in the world slowly fades with time. It is very difficult to remain still and keep things exactly as they are in just one particular moment. But because everything shifts only a little bit at a time, no one really notices the change. We head back to France for a while so that the doctor can try and explain what's going on, maybe. The things that Frederick is seeing, is it all really just a dream? The difference between dreams and reality may very well just be relative. Oh, and what makes you say that? Well, I don't know. I guess it just came into my mind when I was watching Frederick's face while he was sleeping. Hmm, that may be more true than we know. Perhaps what Mr. Chopin is experiencing is not a dream. Only the individual can determine what is a dream and what is reality. Just because his eyes are closed, that does not necessarily mean he is dreaming. So is that your professional opinion? Don't entertain this nonsense. You're a doctor. Not some existentialist poet on the streets. However, if he comes to think that the world he's in on the other side is the true reality, then... Then, it's possible he may never return to our reality. I'm sorry, but who are you? Are you his wife? Are you his wife? Are you his lover, posing as a doctor so you can be on his deathbed without ruffling the feathers of these two women, one of whom may or may not be his wife? Who's anybody in this scene? Whatever. Let's go back to the dream world. Things make more sense there. Oh, but then that must mean you're like me. And that you're gonna die soon, too. Yes, you're right. I'm afraid that may very well be true. So, what kind of magic can you use? Well, essentially any and all kinds of magic. After all, this whole world is in my dream. Wow. Frederick's a bit of a Gary Stu, isn't he? <laughs> You're a strange man, Frederick. No, it's true. Everything around us is all a part of my dream. Even you are just a product of my imagination. Hmm. Okay then. If what you say is true, can you tell what I'm thinking about right now? If we really are inside your dream, then reading my mind should be easy for you. Of course it is. You were thinking that you don't want to use your magical abilities in front of other people anymore. Am I correct? I don't blame you for feeling that way. No one likes to be hurt. Frederick, there's something I'd really like to show you, but it's in the forest. Would you come with me? Huh? You want me to go with you to the forest? 
You mean right now? Uh, Polk? Yes. You sure you want to invite a man pushing 40 who you just met and who told you the world's in his dream into the woods alone at night? With nobody. Alright, alright. I just, I just can't see that ending in any way but magical adventures. So she takes Frederick to Heaven's Mirror Forest. Here's the thing about Tri Crescendo. Beautiful level design is one of the two things they do exceedingly well, along with their soundtrack. Whatever else they have for or against them, their games are presented really, really well. Also, they put me up against goose swan things, and I automatically think that birds are cute, so there's that. They call them Le Opera Knights. I suppose if you just put opera in front of anything, it automatically makes it musically themed. For instance, these guys also have a wicked case of L'Opera Breath. At the end of this road, Polka and Frederick get attacked by a boar. It's not a particularly hard fight, though the guard on that charge attack has some not so good timing to it. I'm going to talk about the combat soon, I promise. But for now, let me just give you a sample of what combat sounds like this early in the game. Shake Comet! Shake Comet! Shake Comet! Good! Sacred Signature! Good! Sacred signature. I'll do my best. Sacred signature. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. I'm trying to cut out footage just to stop these fights from looking repetitive and stale because even by JRPG standards, these things are a slog. Good. <laughs> 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 My journey continues. So we beat the monster, and after the victory screen it says our party level goes up. Again, I'll explain that in its own time. <sighs> I guess it's kind of dangerous out here when it's late at night. The animals in the forest never used to be this aggressive before. You took a complete stranger out into the woods late at night alone, knowing it was full of monsters? What is wrong with you, young lady? I mean, I guess it was worth it because you get to show off some flowers. These flowers are what I wanted to show you. Flowers? Just watch. They're about to blossom. Called Heaven's Mirror. They're like a reflection of the starry sky on the meadows. This is the only place they bloom in the forest. These flowers never bloom during the day, only at night. When the sun is up, they stay in their buds, but they're able to absorb sunlight with their leaves. And after night falls, they let out all the light they've stored when they blossom. It always happens at exactly two o'clock in the morning. They're beautiful. Absolutely stunning. 
It truly is a wondrous sight. But they're also called death lights. Death lights? The sun brings life, but the dark brings death. And these flowers bloom in darkness. So, darkness is evil, light is good. Polk, where are you going with this? Whether you want to call them Heaven's Mirror or Death Lights, that's up to you, Frederick. But it seems like, these days, nearly everyone is taken to calling them Death Lights. Long ago, it was thought they looked like the light that guided people to death, since they blossom the opposite of regular flowers. Even now, a lot of people don't like these flowers. To many, they're still considered a bad omen. That's also how they think of me. Oh, for fuck's sake. Look, let me just give the audience here some advice, okay? If you're going to use symbolism in your stories, or anything that involves critical reading, here's the one thing you need to remember. It's okay if your audience doesn't get it. It really is. No, really. It really is. If I had a dollar for every pretentious piece of media I consumed that thought it was so clever it had to pull out all the stops to make sure everybody was up to speed on how smart and worldly they were being... I mean, we live in the internet era, okay? It's fine if people don't get it. Lord knows after this game came out, if it actually employed some cryptic nonsense, somebody would come around sometime later with a YouTube video. You know, one of those ones with a red arrow and a circle in the thumbnail, and with a title like, Five things you may have missed about the Heaven's Mirror scene in Eternal Sonata 2017 HD 1080p gone sexual. Um, sorry. Tangent over. Please continue. Frederick, you said before that this whole world is all just a dream you're having, right? But if you're in your own dream, how can you be so completely positive that what's happening is only a dream? And if what you're experiencing in the dream is so realistic to you, how can you even tell what's actually the real world? And to prove my point, you didn't read my mind earlier. <sighs> you were wrong. I was thinking about leaving Tenuto. I want to go out into the world and live my own life. Even if that life only exists inside your dream. I don't know how much time I have left to live, but I want to live what's left of my life in a positive way, bringing happiness to others. I just want to help people somehow. Like these flowers, even though people call them death lights, they still blossom and struggle to live on. You're going to leave the village? But where do you intend to go after you leave Tenuto? I'll go to Forte Castle, and then I'm going to meet with the Count to ask about the taxes on floral powder. Because right now, they're hurting everyone in the village. You know, you should be happy you couldn't read my mind. Since you can't use magic, it means you don't have an incurable illness. <sighs> Please, stay at my house tonight. I'll tell my mom you're coming. You're a guest in our dream world, after all. That's not something that happens every day. <laughs> a flower that resembles you. A bad omen. Death lights. Hmm. Did you get all that, audience? This will be on the test later. So back at Ritardondo, we figure out what Reddo's master plan is. Wow, Reddo! This is the first time I'm going outside Retardondo! It's not like we're going on a picnic, Beat. Don't get so excited. Yeah, I know that, Reddo. 
We're going to help Red Ardondo's poor by getting the leaders to lower taxes on stuff besides the mineral powder, right? That way, everyone can afford blankets and cheese and all the honey-covered bread they could ever possibly want. Then everyone can finally be happy, right, Redo? That's exactly right. Hey, I'm proud of you, B. We can't solve things by just stealing bread. Hey, while you're at it, you think you could get somebody to look at the giant rat infestation going on in the sewers? That's kind of a big deal. We're heading to Forte Castle to talk to the guys in charge. Come on, let's go. Hey, Riddle, wait up! The game tells me I need to check on the kids in the sewer, so naturally I go to do that. It turns out, however, there's really not a good reason for it. One of the kids asked to trade my rat tail for a stick, which is apparently the first in a long line of trades I'm not too crazy about starting. Sorry, but side quests in JRPGs require either a manual or an insane devotion to thoroughness I just don't have anymore. Wahaha! Wahaha! Listen to those seagulls squawk! Wahaha! Wah! Anyway, it's on to a go-go forest. Okay, you gotta watch yourself, Beat. It's not gonna be the same as fighting the rats in Retardondo. I know. Don't worry. I'll take some good pictures. Pictures? Come on, don't waste time on that stuff. You need to help me fight. Hey, that's not nice. Don't say things like that. Taking pictures isn't a waste of time. Actually, it kind of is. Using the camera involves activating one of Beat's special skills, which he has in lieu of, you know, an attack. It sets up this awkward as fuck third person mode where you aim a reticle and press the button to take photos, and that's all you can do in a turn. The end result is a bunch of ineptly shot photographs of a bouncing melon or a guinea pig butt that you could sell for money, theoretically. Of course, this being a JRPG, it's more efficient to just grind money out of the monsters through fights and gain levels in the process than it is to use the camera as a get-rich-quick device and skip over vital training. So, in other words, Beat's primary gimmick is a waste of time. The walk through the forest is long, and full of repetitive fights against the same enemies we dealt with earlier. The only new thing we see are big tree things. They have bad breath. <laughs> At the end of the road, we encounter a boss fight because it's the end of a level in a JRPG, and for seemingly no other reason. Don't take all day! I don't even know what this thing is supposed to be. It looks like the bastard love child of Godzilla, Mothra, and Sarah from The Land Before Time. He likes to get behind you so you can't block his attacks properly, and he can actually get pretty deadly. Fortunately, I'm actually over-leveled for this bit for LP purposes, so I actually had time to snap some photographs on top of it. You can't win if you think too much. Right on! I can do better than that! If we don't hurry, we're gonna get caught in the rain. So what? We can handle a little rain. I mean, the hideout's roof leaks like crazy. <laughs> And that's just when it drizzles. Yeah, you got a point there. Suddenly, we get this. This is a performance of Chopin's Raindrop Prelude, over a series of classical art pieces, and a silent text crawl detailing parts of Chopin's life. They do this once a chapter, round about the halfway mark, and they're actually interesting in that I'm a total nerd and I like to learn things kind of way. I'm going to go ahead and post these up in separate videos without commentary so you can watch them for yourself. You know, if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> 